Hi and welcome to day 57 of a year of living sincerely. Um, I'm reporting on location today from Art and Design Consultants Gallery, the Gallery in the Sky downtown Cincinnati, and we have the Battle We Didn't Choose uh, exhibit here with Angelo and the photographs of his lovely wife, Jen. And um, I kind of think this is cool. Uh, I thought I'd just take you through this little progression here, which is pretty intense as it is beautiful. This is the battle they didn't choose, breast cancer. This is the battle they did choose. Love every morsel of the people in your life. Jennifer Wise, Mary Dino. Yeah, they were married five months when she was diagnosed. And uh, I, I knew the moment I saw Jen that she was the one. She was just full of life and energy. And I just, when I saw her, I knew I, I wanted to be a better person, you know. And she was the kind of friend you want to have. She looked out for everyone she loved. She just lived life. And she loved like I've never known anyone to love before. So. We were married in Central Park in 2007, and uh, then five months later she was diagnosed. And uh, you know, I remember, of course, we were shocked and, and numb. And still, I think to this day I'm a bit numb. But we just kind of looked at each other and didn't even really have to say it. And we knew we were together, and we had no idea what was going to happen the next few years. But we had each other. So we went through our first round, you know, the double mastectomy and chemo and radiation and reconstruction. And that wrapped up in October of 2008. And I remember we went uh, in November, we went to Provincetown, which is where um, Cape Cod, where we went for our honeymoon. And we took a week just to get away. And the first time we got there was election night. And I remember we were watching, you know, Obama was elected, and that was such a, a moment in our history. But also we were sitting there thinking, you know, beyond that for us, it was like, wow, our life now is, we're kind of, it's just different. You know, we were going to start to rebuild our life, where a year earlier we were just newlyweds. Still we were newlyweds, but I remember that moment, how it was just so strange, everything. Life was just this, uh, this brand new experience for us. So we lived about a year, it was about a year and a half of living through all that before Jen was re-diagnosed. And I'm sure some of you can relate. You know, your life just doesn't go back to normal. It was never a normal again. And uh, we just found that people would say things that didn't make sense, like, oh, you're better now, or, you know, why are you still upset? The cancer's gone. And it wasn't something that made us mad, but we, we kind of started getting that feeling that, wow, they just don't know. And we didn't know before that, so it wasn't, it wasn't like, um, they should know this. We just kind of realized that we had experienced that. Jen initially had, I think, the, the idea to start sharing her experience because she felt that people needed to hear about this, whether it was other women with cancer and she could help them by talking about her treatments or side effects or whatever it was. She was very involved. So in April 2010, when Jen's cancer metastasized, Finally, I just started photographing our day-to-day. -day. It was overwhelming that people started contacting us to say, hey, I just want you to know that I got a mammogram. Or, you know, I was just diagnosed and, you know, 
of Jen, you inspire me. That was uh, that was humbling. And and we thought about all the people who had done things before us. You know, people who maybe were on a trial drug, or they they just they took a chance. So that years later, when Jennifer was getting treatment, the doctors had a better idea of what they were doing. And we felt like we needed to keep that circle going. We wanted to do something. So. I don't think we ever had an idea that it would, things would progress and that there would be an exhibition or whatever, because all the things have happened. But people started grabbing on, and it helped us. This was a, a, a positive source in our life that was a battle you know, every day. You know, you know, a lot of you know that. And when Jen passed, I, I, you know, I, I just... I felt like, you know, and you just spoke about this a minute, I felt like it was, this is something that I have to give them. You know, Jennifer, she gave me these photographs, so I really believe that, and I just happened to have a camera. And now I feel that this is what I have to do. I, I, I just want people to see uh, the love, not just the cancer. I want people to see, like, um, if you look over at this photo over here, Jen, one of Jen's closest friends, Beth, and this is all that it took. Like, she didn't have to say something. She didn't have to say the magic word. She didn't have to have an answer. She just needed to be there, you know, lay in bed next to her and hold her because, you know, this is what happened to us that day. We were celebrating our fourth anniversary, and uh, I thought she was more beautiful every day. And I remember that moment just, I used to tease her, if you're lucky, you have a great shaped head. You know, just keep shaving. Uh, I, I do love all the photos, but I think that one really hits me because I feel like it's just Jen. So special. We were down at a restaurant in, uh, in the city, and it was just a special night, you know, because we, we didn't have a lot of time to just go be a couple. And that night, it was just like we went out and had dinner and celebrated our anniversary, and and we were just two people. Um, but the wind could blow, and I could look at another photograph and say this. One. Jen floating in the ocean. This one. Uh, we were on vacation in Thompson, North Carolina, and this was last year, last summer, well, summer of 2011. And Jen was a little upset because she was, at that time, she was using a walker and a cane, and it was hard to get around. And she was thinking she wasn't going to be able to really go in the ocean and it was bumming her out. So we were there for a week and about uh, maybe the third day, like each day she would get closer to the ocean and we put her
her chair down and we go sit there and the wave would come in. And after about, I think it was maybe the fourth day, her sister and I were holding her hand and we would take her out into the water and the waves would hit her. And the fifth day she was she said, I remember she said, let go. And she was floating. And again there was that determination. She wasn't gonna let cancer keep her from swimming in the ocean. And I think there's a certain calm about that photograph and the peacefulness. Someone, one woman that I was talking with about this actually was upset by it because she thought that Jen's bald head, that because of that, I, I was only looking at it from a male perspective. And I can understand that, that different people have different opinions. Jen wasn't really crazy about wearing a wig. She didn't feel that. But I, I tried to explain to her that the reason why I, that story it wasn't about her head. You know, it was about her spirit and her courage that, you know, she wasn't going to let cancer dictate what happened in her life. Um, so right now, that's my favorite photograph. And then this next one by <laughs> Vanessa. Can I hug you? Yes, of course. Of course. Um, Vanessa. Exhibition in Cleveland, and uh, the last day of the show, Vanessa and Billy and Billy's family made the trip up, and that was definitely one of the highlights um, of that whole exhibition. And everything, <laughs> everything you guys are doing with Lip Sincerely.